And it is a title fight, guys. And people are like, oh, it's bad matchmaking. It's a title fight. You fight who's got the title. You fight everybody. If you think you're the best in the world, you fight everybody around you. And if that guy's a strap, I'm going right for that guy. I don't care if I don't know him. I don't care if he has a big profile or not. I got to beat that guy if I want to be a world champion. Welcome into Boxing Scenes. Top stories here on Pro Box TV. Download the Pro Box TV app now. Never fall behind in your boxing news. Of course, the big news in boxing this week. Tim Zhu and his destruction at the hands of Bakram Murtazaliyev last Saturday. A three-round fight that had four knockdowns before the corner mercifully threw in the towel to help me break it all down. Jimmy Smith in studio alongside the champs. Chris Algieri, Polly Malinaji, and ESPN boxing analyst Tim Bradley. Uh, you know, Chris, a lot of criticism about the team of, of Tim Zhu, that how they booked him in the wrong fight too soon, all of these things. He's a grown man who made his own choices in this fight to take this fight when he took it. Is the criticism of the team warranted? What's your thought on it? I mean, it's a talking point. I don't really want to talk about that. I want to talk no. about Tim daring to be great. Um, you know, taking on the fights and the fighters that you want to see a guy take on. And listen, when you, when you reach the way that he was reaching, you catch losses. Listen, this is how I made my career. I went from fighting a top three. I was completely unknown. I fought a top three guy, that, which got me to my title fight against Ruslan Pavanikov. I went from Ruslan right to Pacquiao. Right after Pacquiao, I went to Amir Khan. And I took two losses there. And yes, I, I performed much better in the Khan fight. People were looking at it like, oh, wow, you know, you, you redeem yourself a little bit. But guess what? I had two losses back to back. That put me back so much. And that's why fighters are unwilling to take these risks. We live in an era where you have to have an O. You have to, have, you have to be undefeated. You have to be perfect. And it's really unfortunate because it keeps the fighters from taking the risk, the promoters from letting their fighters take the risk as well. Um, and then the fan base who just who throws them away. And now guys are going to throw away Tim. I hear people, I, I'm seeing headlines. Is Tim Zhu washed? The guy took two losses. To, to good fighters, one of which, very controversial, I thought he was looking fantastic in that fight before uh, the elbow causes that horrific, you know, blood uh, cut on his forehead, blinded by blood for the next 11 rounds, fights his butt off but ends up losing a close fight, uh, you know, gets back and right into a title fight, but man, fights a, a murderous guy. And I think this was more coming out for Murtaz Elayev than it is to say that Tim Zhu is completely washed and we should throw him to the wayside. But at the end of the day, Tim chose these fights, man. Tim wanted to fight Virgil Ortiz. You know, that fight fell through, and he went right back into this fight. And it is a title fight, guys. And people are like, oh, it was bad matchmaking. It's a title fight. You fight who's got the title. You fight everybody. If you think you're the best in the world, you fight everybody around you. And if that guy has a strap, I'm going right for that guy. I don't care if I don't know him. I don't care if he has a big profile or not. I got to beat that guy if I want to be a world champion. I just think Tim moving like a champion, acting like a fighter, um, fell short this time. But unfortunately, the, the, the powers that be are going to look at him a different way. Uh, the, the question here, of course, Tim, let me ask you about it. The loss of Fundora. What's making the rounds is a video of him touching where the cut was to make sure he wasn't bleeding in the middle of the fight. W what were there leftovers from the Fundora loss in that fight, in your opinion, tactically oh, speaking? Absolutely. absolutely. A lot of residue left over from that fight. Not only just from the cut. I, I just think just from the, 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 you know, believing in yourself. You know, I, I, I feel that he took this fight because of that, that Fundora fight. I felt like... You know, he felt that, you know, the circumstances, of course, the blood dripping down his eye, you know, is controversial. Uh, you know, some will say he, they should have stopped the fight or some will say that they, they shouldn't have stopped the fight or so on and so forth. The ref should have stopped the fight. But, you know, he's dealing with all of this. He's trying to process all of that. Understand that, people. You know, he felt that, you know what, if, and he was the favorite. Think about it. I was the, He was the favorite during that fight. He's like, man, I should have got that win. So he says, OK, well, I'm getting another, I can get another shot at another title. Why not? Why not? You know, I'm that guy. Again, before the Fedora fight, everybody was saying that he was that guy. He was trying to prove not only to himself, to the fans, and Mazaliev or Marta, Marta, how you say his name? Marta Zaliev. Oh, you got Marta it. Zaliev. <laughs> anyway, he was trying to prove to him that he's that guy. I mean, when I looked at film of Mazaliev, I'm going to tell you right now, he didn't look like he was that spooky. He did not at all. I mean, he was getting beat up, battered, getting getting wobbled, I think, in the, the previous fight before this one. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, this guy don't stand a chance against Tim Zhu. He's so exposed. Yes, he does have punching power, but who's going to be able to get there quicker is the more technical fighter in Tim Zhu? And obviously he didn't. So um, I tip my hat off to Tim Zhu. I'm going to tell y'all right now, he's the type of fighter that I love and I will always support. Continue to fight the best out there to prove that you're the best. He came up short this time around. 
That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that he's a bum. That doesn't mean that, you know, he took this fight too soon whatsoever. No, he didn't. He took this fight because he was believed in himself, but his comeback fight is going to be even tougher now because now he's mentally messed up, as you saw in that interview after this, this fight. Now, Paulie, that's exactly what I want to ask you. The first fight, we've talked about it at length. Pro Box TV, look at our YouTube channel. We discussed that fight at length. It was a cut, as you pointed out. It was uh, controversial. It should have been stopped because of the cut. He would have been ahead on the scorecards. That would have been a win for him. A different animal than getting knocked down four times before your, before your team throws in the towel. How does he mentally get over a loss that was devastating? Only way to say it. Paulie, where does he begin here? Well, I, I do think that he now is entitled to possibly take on a uh, sort of a, a redemption fight in Australia or two, you know, sort of work his way back into the mix more so not because he can't fight, but because to get the, his mentality, right. You know, I, I think in this fight, what I noticed is first off, I, I was told that his, uh, his, tra his trainer, his corner did tell him to go easy the first four rounds, you know, don't, don't be aggressive the first four rounds and sort of not to take too many big risks in the first four rounds against Mataz Aliyev. But I think emotionally he was so charged up. You could see in his decision-making after the loss to Fandora that, you know, he wanted to make that wrong a right because it was just so much bad luck that happened with that Fandora fight from Thurman pulling out to taking on a six, six Southpaw as your replacement to getting cut with the elbow to the, to an idiot doctor in the corner, not stopping it when there's a cut there and, and then getting the loss. So I think he was just he was motivated to just make all the wrongs right, and he felt like like the champ Tim said, you know, that he wasn't a real loss, you know, and he was going to show you against the best opposition possible that he's still the guy everybody was talking about. And so he tried to fight Virgil. So already that raised a red flag, like okay, this guy's looking to make a statement right now, you know. And so when he takes on Mataz Ali, who's the IBF champion, even if his corner tells him, "Oh, play it safe the first four rounds." You can see his mentality for the last bunch of months already is I'm going to make a statement. So he went out there to try to make a statement and he didn't really think about that there could be a danger. He probably played out this fight in his mind in a certain way. And all of a sudden, when it didn't play out that way, all of a sudden he couldn't really make the adjustment. He was he was kind of in the moment, you know, and and it was just ends up getting blown away by Mataz Aliyev. So the, the return is now the learning lesson here is that maybe, you know, sometimes with Eastern fighters, they look to fight everybody constantly. And, and, and there's no balance in boxing. Western fighters fight dishwashers on pay-per-view. And, 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 and Eastern fighters fight constant monsters and, and, and don't get the credit for it because they all knock each other off and take L's. All of them end up taking L's. You need to have that somewhere in the middle where you know you can sort of meet and get that, that middle ground. And that middle ground for Tim at this point, after two losses in a row, is probably to take a page out of the Western fighter mentality and sort of go back, take a step back or two down in, in opposition and sort of work your way back in and work on the things you may have had to work on because there were technical flaws as well. Two of the knockdowns were because he didn't hold the phone. He's going for a left uppercut and he got dropped with a left hook and then he was going for a left hook to the body later on and he got dropped with a left hook to the head both times. You know, So there were some technical flaws that could be worked on as well, but it's more so for the mentality, for the mental part of the game, uh, for him to get back in, get some wins and work on some things uh, for him to get back in. And you know what? He's got the best example possible in his own family. Kostya Zhu took a bad L against Vince Phillips that shocked the whole boxing world yeah. when it happened. Took a bad knockout. And he didn't jump right back in. I don't remember the details now uh, distinctly because this was in 1997. But I do not, I will say, I do not remember Zhu making American headlines to that degree until about 99 when he beat Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., who, again, was already on the out to begin with, but he gave him a name recognition fighter. If I remember correctly, this was in 99 or 2000. This is after 97 when Vince Phillips knocked him out. So he did go back, take his time, rebuild the right way. And when he came back, he was a monster. He knocked off Mitchell. He knocked off uh, Sean ben Mitchell, Zab Judah. Yep. He, he, he defended the title a bunch of times, and he didn't lose it until 2005. OK, so so you got an example in, in his own family that Tim can really go back. Luckily, you know, not all of us have that uh, are fortunate enough to have that where we can just pick up the phone and call somebody like this. In Tim's case, it's his own father who did this, who actually took this exact almost a, a very similar path and, and rode the similar path. And it wound up in a very successful path for him when he was able to make his return in the right way and come back in the right way. So I do think that. Tim still got it. I don't think it never it ever went anywhere. I just think he was a, a, bit, a bit too much in a rush to prove all the naysayers wrong. And uh, I think if he does things right, 
he can still be a player. But this weight class is very, very good. So when he's ready to make his return to the top of the division and take on top level opposition, he will. These this division, I I think, will still be dangerous. But he'll be more ready mentally to jump back into a tough fight as opposed to now, where maybe mentally he wasn't ready to jump into a Mizatali kind of fight. Paul, you're 100 percent correct. 13 in a row, Kostasu won after that that loss. Uh, Chris, when you look at it, a lot of people are, are, are messaging me and testing me today, going, "Man, have you ever seen a a boxer fall off as quickly as Tim Zhu?" And and I, you know, the boogeyman of falling off is, is Riddick Bow, who went, you know, the the yes, they were disqualification wins, but he was done um, with the Andrew Galata fights. This idea that Tim Zhu is washed or finished or done. How accurate is that, and what does it take for you to agree or disagree with that assessment? Will it take that comeback fight? What's your thought on it? Well, it just depends on what he's going to do mentally and psychologically from here. If, if he can yep. get over the hump, you know, similar to Champ, what you just talked about, his father, you know, he's going to have to kind of go grassroots, go back to Australia, get some fights over there. Um, our, our, our colleague, Sean Porter, I believe on his podcast, said it was going to take him two years of rebuilding to get back, and I, that's about right, at least. Um, you know, he's going to get back, some, take some time off for one. He's had a, a very traumatic the last couple months. Um, sp- actually, I'm going to speak about the trauma from when, we, when he touched his head thinking that there was yeah. a cut. So, obviously, the fight was very close together. He had a traumatic moment where he got cut in that fight with Fondora. Deals with the blood. When I broke my orbital in the Ruslan fight, that was a traumatic event. I've, speak- I've spoken to professionals about this. Fighters do develop PTSD from fights. So, if you have damage in a fight, a, a, a particularly grueling fight, you're carrying that with you. I remember round one when I fought Manny Pacquiao, which was five months after I fought Ruslan and shattered that orbital, he hit me with a straight left hand, and I could have sworn he broke it again. It was immediately. Manny was so smart. Their team was so ready that as soon as I threw a jab, they threw a left hand with me and it hit me right, right on that eye. Couldn't have, couldn't have been better placed. And I immediately started feeling the swelling. I started thinking that it was, I don't know, it happened again. It's the first round. I got to do with this again for 11 and a half rounds. It changes your mind. That's why when you saw him reaching for that blood, he went back. He had a flashback back to that Fundora moment, that traumatic moment. That's what the PTSD is. You're having that post-traumatic stress uh, event happen right there again. And I think that really threw him off early on. Champ, you mentioned that his team wanted him to start slow. He didn't start slow, especially after that. Uh-huh. From then on, he went uh-huh. right, right into the, into the, the, the lion's lair. Um, so, you know, there is a lot to speak on when it comes to having back-to-back fights, and then having, uh, especially when one of them is so traumatic. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but, the same, but I'll just say this at the same time. Let me add on that. Please. What about the knockdown, the first knockdown? You know, in the past, he's been knocked down before. Yeah. And he's gotten up and he's finished guys that knocked them down and finished them. So, I mean, that's in the back of his mind also as he's trying to get that get back, but he's mm-hmm. putting himself in harm's way. Marta Zaliev, I got to give him credit, man, him and his team. Okay. Because that left hook he landed. It was like he was just sitting on it. He knew he was going to throw a left hook. He knew that right hand was going to drop. And that's the study. Like, he knew exactly when to throw it, man, and executed the the game plan, man. Yeah, it wasn't. Knockdowns the same way. Yeah, but but I never never seen Marta Zali throw it like that, though. Like you said, Tim, he he pulled back on it. He sat back. Normally, every time I watch him, he would fall forward a lot. I I was saying... The Mertazali, the problem was his balance because he overthrows his punches so much. That one, like you said, he was just waiting. He's like, ah, oh, I know he's going to throw a left hook. He knew he was going to throw it. And he, yeah, he because that's his bread and, 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 and butter. Two knockdowns. Two knockdowns, the same left hook. One with, with, left with hook. center ring and the other one, Mertazali's back was on the ropes, actually. And he just whipped it uh, yeah. when, when Zoo reached for the body shot. These guys what are was ready. That, what was that fight where he didn't look that good, Mertazali? It, it was the fight before this. I don't know the guy he faced. But... I third, I, I could have sworn I heard somebody say that he was going through Ramadan during that time. Yeah, fasting during the day. Yeah, it's during yes. Ramadan. Yeah. So I believe, I believe, I believe Tim Zhu, just like in his team in his in his match break with everybody, and what I saw, they they saw exactly what I was looking at. They was like, man, this is a guy. Yes, he's dangerous. However, like there's so many openings. You know what I mean? If I could just get inside, if I could stay close, I can beat him to the punch. They were seeing all these all these flaws. In this man's arsenal. However, hey, he showed up and he showed out. You can never, you can never take a fight. I'm not saying that he took this guy lightly at all, but I'm just telling, telling the young folks out there, the young fighters out there, you can never, ever, ever take any fighter lightly. And you cannot depend on him to be weak so you can be strong at the end of the day. So I'm not saying that's what happened, but damn, Martin Zaliev, he proved me wrong. He's a hell of a fighter, man.
He proved a lot of this wrong. Once again, Tim Zhu the favorite in that. Can he bounce back? Two losses in a row under very different circumstances. But as we say on Pro Box TV, if you lose, you're entertaining. You fight back. You fight hard. There's room for you in this sport. Can he do it? Well, a tough fight coming up. That's right. Wednesday from Madison Square Garden. We're calling it right here on Pro Box TV. Don't miss it. Wednesday Night Fights. In partnership with Debella Entertainment, it's Broadway Boxing, Heroes on the Hudson 2, with proceeds benefiting veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. October 23rd, don't miss Mio Yoshida as she defends her IBF Bantamweight World title in a rematch against Shredda Metcalf. Live from the theater at Madison Square Garden, Wednesday Night Fights. For more Pro Box TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.